Hi. You're very kind. OK, so first some housekeeping. Um, no flash photography, please. It's really, really annoying for people, and I thought I'd demonstrate exactly why. OK, so if we have to have your phones turned off, we have Joel Pinoli here uh, today from Apple, and I'm guaranteeing you he knows someone at Apple that can turn your phone off. So please be mindful of the people around you. Um, and. Uh, you know, and your contribution to the, the culture and the, and the experience here. Uh, let's see, some other housekeeping notes. I've just lost all my notes, trying to do that little stunt. Coming up. Okay, there we go. Um, please silence all your mobile devices, and that includes, you know, your phones, your tablets. Some of you have Fitbits and watches, and now there's implants and those damn Google glasses. So again, be mindful of the folks around you uh, and uh, how you're showing up as a member of this community. Uh, wear your name badge at all times. And of course, I'm not wearing mine, but <laughs> I'm up here, so <laughs> I guess I can get away with that. Um, but this is what gets you into all of the events today and tomorrow and, and tonight as well. Uh, it's also how people get to know you. It's, it's hard to meet strangers. And I guarantee you, every single person in this room has interesting stories and interesting questions. And if you're not wearing your badge, it's hard to go up to meet, meet someone. It's just one more barrier. And so that badge is a real help to networking and, and great conversations. Um, there will be videos of all the presentations today put online, so you don't have to feel like you have to scribble down notes and stuff. You can share these with your peers and your uh, clients, et cetera, later. Um, there's a Wi-Fi network. And so there's the password, gain2014. It is case sensitive, so please do the lowercase gain. Um, and then the Twitter, the Twitter handle and the Twitter hashtag. Now, the Twitter hashtag is pretty important to us. You can follow us at the at AIGA conference. The, the, gain, the pound gain conference hashtag is how we're hoping you share questions for the, for the speakers. So as speakers are talking, tweet your questions to us. And that's one of the mechanisms. It's probably one of the best and most efficient mechanisms for us to um, call as a community questions, because we don't have a lot of time for Q&A. And running uh, microphones to the audience is kind of a hassle. Uh, there's a Flickr hashtag. Um, and that's the same thing, gain conference. Um, but you know, I have to ask. Please don't use the throwback, the iced tea, or the Hudson filters. If you must, the uh, conference, the, the approved conference filters for photos are Lomo, Brooklyn, and Newsprint. <laughs> and lastly, um, there's a great app that's been pr produced for this conference. So go to the App Store, put in Gain Conference, download it. All the information is there, uh, plus some cool tricks as well. Um, I'm really honored to be here uh, and, and part of the largest design in, uh, organization in the world. That's the AIGA. I've been a member on and off for about 20, 25 years. And for those of you who are new to this community, the GAIN conference is the every other year business conference for the AIGA. And it's usually focused on the business of design and the design industry. And this year, Rick was incredibly gracious um, to allow me to sort of flip things around. So this year, for the next two days, and actually for the workshops that were yesterday, we're going to look at the redesign and the design of business and society and government and the economy and the markets and all these sort of new opportunities that haven't traditionally been part of the design uh, industry. Uh, we assume you already know about design thinking. You already know your design craft. Not that these things aren't important. That's not what we're going to concentrate on the, uh, for the next two days. And so it's a little bit different today. Um, uh, I'm reminded by something that Alan Trachanoff said in the Educators Summit yesterday, um, that designers, and I quote, designers are expected to be the connective tissue for business now. And at the same time, everything is broken. And he rejects the notion that design is in service of industry. That's a dangerous place to be. Never before have designers and had more opportunities to further both careers and how their lives interact and intersect their communities and societies to make positive change. And for many years, this community has been really interested in how do we interact with the rest of the world? How can we have a positive impact beyond just the uh, profits we make from our our projects and the, and the businesses we have. Uh, we see this in material ways in our community, like the engagement, engagement of social and political and ecological 
uh, and other issues, as well as practical discussions about new tools for accomplishing these things, like the living principles, for one example. I repeat, never before has design been more influential and designers had more opportunities, even if the projects going forward look fundamentally different than what we've been used to. These two days are about creative leadership. We're all part of a creative community, even though the job titles uh, uh, for some of us and even some of the responsibilities are different than we imagine and disparate from what we were taught in school. Our world has so many challenges and everyone wants us to be, uh, to be and make meaningful change in our worlds and to some extent, that's what defines a designer today. The only way to meet these challenges is to create new opportunities ourselves, new structures, new platforms, even new business models. Um, and explore the, the boundaries between different design disciplines as well as where design intersects different industries and disciplines of our peers. Today, we all need to be designers, whether we design policies or systems, products or services, events, and other kinds of experiences, spaces, business models, even whole organizations. We're all in this together as creative professionals, and we need to shift the conversation from who we are and what we're responsible for to what we're going to focus on and accomplish together. With that, I'd like to introduce my co-MC, my co-moderator, Jean Litka. I'm super excited. For those of you who don't know her, she's, uh, she's an amazing woman that's, that's a designer at heart, even though she probably will bristle at, especially in this community, being called a designer. She would never call herself a designer, but she is absolutely a designer at heart, but she comes from a different uh, a background in a different world. She teaches at the Darden School, and she's taught there for many years. She ran the Institute for Entrepreneurship and Innovation at Darden. Um, she's done her stint in the business world as well. She's focused on corpor corporate learning, and she studied mavericks, or as she um, defines them, catalysts in Fortune 500 firms, and what makes them successful when they try to innovate in a culture that really doesn't support innovation. Her latest book, Design for Growth, is absolutely a standard textbook in most, design, uh, most business programs that teach design now. It, it certainly is in our own program. Um, and so she's here to offer a, a different perspective, a fresh perspective. When we start drinking the Kool-Aid and talking about how design is a panacea for everyone, she's going to be the person that says, OK, hold on. You're not the only people in the world that feel this way. Let's talk about what, where design is and how it's changing. Um, so she's one of us, but from a different perspective. Right? Well, Jean. thank you, Nate. Well, there's so many reasons why I'm so thrilled to be here, but I'll just get the obvious one out of the way first. It's not often that I get to be the one wearing the real pants <laughs> in, any, in any particular. But of course, you know, if I had legs like that, I'd go the same direction. Ah, thank you. There we go. Um, and it's also not because, actually, I usually get to spend most of my time in holiday in ballrooms in Duluth. So uh, the trade up to the Marriott at the Times Square is really significant for me. Uh, but, but, you know, uh, I am, as Nathan said, a, a true believer in design thinking. I, and I will warn you, my undergraduate is in accounting. So that says something about the path that I've traveled. She's come a long way. I've come a long way, baby. Yeah. Uh, but, uh, but at the same time that I am a true believer in the power of design thinking, I also still spend 95% of my time in a very traditional environment, traditional business schools, yeah. working with managers, um, at companies where many of them have honestly never had the opportunity to meet a designer. Right? They haven't, they don't work with designers, they don't live in San Francisco or Manhattan, they don't even work for enlightened big organizations like IBM or Procter and Gamble. Perhaps most shocking of all, and you're not going to believe this when I tell you, but it is true, most of them have never heard of IDEO. Imagine that world, right? I would tell you they've never heard of Apple, but in fact, they all do, in fact, have iPhones. They just don't actually text or tweet or anything with them. So, so in this world, um, uh, we have managers, though, who have terribly complex problems that you could help them solve. Right? The challenge that, that we have and the space that I live in is how do we close that gap between these terrific, inspiring conversations of what we know design can do, and this terrible lack of understanding, and I would say fear, that is what gets in the way in lots of organizations with lots of managers, and that leads them not to embrace design thinking. 
Right? Because what we often see, I think, when we talk to managers, what looks like arrogance, what looks like an obsession with analytical methods and all, is just fear masquerading as something more macho. And why is that? Because I, I think often as designers, you live in a world where you don't even realize what a different view you have of the world than most managers. Right? You truly do have a learning and a growth mindset. And in our research, we know that's the first and in some ways most significant factor in anyone being able to deal with the kind of unpredictability and ambiguity in our world. Right? It's not as though people in the business world aren't scared of the world they face. They aren't aware that it's no longer delivering the kind of predictability and control over life that they crave. They just don't know what to do about it. And so for me, that's what's so exciting to be here, uh, to, to be here with you and to have a couple of days to spend listening and learning and thinking about how we close this great divide. Right? And, and for me, the listening and learning is not just about listening and learning from the speakers we'll have. It's also from listening, listening and learning and learning more about your experiences. Because I've got a feeling that most of the people in this room actually every day have to manage that great divide that we're talking about between what you know about the possibility that design thinking represents and the reality of life in the big bureaucracies, whether it's in business or government or other aspects of the social sector that many, many of us live in. So I am absolutely excited yeah. about, uh, about two days of fantastic conversation. And fantastic conversation not just on the stage, Nathan, but fantastic conversation off the stage as well. So thank you for, uh, for allowing me to eavesdrop for two days. Yeah. And I would just say that um, you're all responsible for the conversation. You're all responsible for what happens here to, uh, over the next two days as well. So engage with each other. Engage with the speakers, uh, however, you know, whether it's through Twitter or whether it's through um, uh, at the breaks. Um, you're as much in control of this experience as, as we are. And we prepared a bunch of things for you. But um, if you don't take the initiative, if you don't jump in, uh, you're not going to have as great an experience. So. Terrific. So we'll start Good. off. <laughs>